All right, we're to my favorite part in any room makeover. We are painting the walls today. I'm just showing you this because we always get asked what color we're using. It's a custom mix. It's not any of the bare whites that they've got. It's color matched to the white swan DIY paint. We use this on our walls, so there's the code for you. So Jamie is cutting the bottom here with a brush and then I'm going to go through and do all of the rolling and hopefully we'll get curtains up today. We've got to cover up this big bright window here. Okay, so we're gonna do drop cloth curtains like we had in the living room and over our bay window and sliding glass door. What we're gonna do, instead of going right here above where the window sill is, we're gonna go up just six inches below the ceiling and about a foot out. That way we can open the curtains up and have the full window be exposed to give light. And then putting these up to about six inches from the ceiling will make the room look taller than it actually is. I've just got some of these small little wall anchors for the screws. I'm going to put those in before I put the screws in. That way it won't tear out because those curtains get pretty heavy. All right, I've already installed the anchors. I'm just putting these other two hangers up and then we'll get the rod and the curtains on here. For the curtains, I'm doing drop claws. I've used them in my basement, in my living room, in my dining room. I really like them. They're a good farmhouse curtain, a nice weight, and the price you can't beat. At about 10 bucks a drop cloth, you're spending about half the price of regular curtain panels. Plus, they've got great texture. One of the things that I do to them, I get asked all the time, is I bleach them. I don't really have a hard and fast rule for it. I just put them in the sink, dump some bleach in there, fill it up with water so that way it's all soaking. Use a big spoon to stir it all up so I don't get my arm in the bleach let it sit overnight and then I wash them the next day and I make sure to double rinse to get out all the bleach and I also use fabric softer so they're nice and soft. I like to have about a 10 inch ruffle on the top and I also want to make sure that they're long enough that they're draping the ground a little bit. You can do it however long you want to. This allows for me not to have to hem them and it's a quick easy process. So now that I've washed these and they've shrunk, they started out at six feet, but they've shrunk down to 66 inches. So the middle is 33 inches. All right, so these are drapery clips and I'm just gonna put one in the middle, one on the end. So I just kind of eyeball it, make sure that it's mostly even because they're gonna be a little bit puckered most of the time. So we've got that. If you really want it to be perfect, then you probably should measure and divide, but that's good. I'm just gonna do the other one just like this and we'll get these hung. All right, walls painted. They actually shrunk more than we thought. These ones did not hang quite as low, but that's gonna be behind the bed. So we're okay with that. Normally we probably adjust them, make them touch the ground, but it's not gonna matter. And we wanna keep a consistent drape up top here. It's the end of an era, you're painting the mint away. Yep. These are going all white. Zeb has the bases to the nightstands in the garage. And while I'm painting these white, he's gonna be sanding the tops on those so that way we can use real stain on the top. And then we'll give the base a new fresh coat of white. It's been a year and a half or so since we painted them and they're a little dirty. We want the drawer fronts and the base of the nightstands to be the same color. So everything is getting a fresh coat of white and Zeb's gonna be out in the garage sanding down the top. I'm using my Paint Pixie one and three quarters brush and my DIY White Swan. It's a clay-based, all-natural paint, no VOC, so there's no problems with me painting inside the house. The other nice thing is it's heavily pigmented, so within two coats, I'll have full coverage on this or enough coverage that I can go ahead and sand it which is nice because with white, sometimes it takes forever. 
you can purchase the paint and the paintbrush I'm using at jamierayvintage.com. I've got real stain number two. I'm gonna be staining the tops of these nightstands that we've got, just sanded them down. And real important with the real stain, you wanna make sure that you're down to the raw wood. If you're not down to the raw wood, it's water-based and it won't take. It'll just rub off when you go to put your sealer on. It's food grade, so you can use it with other items like butcher blocks, rolling pins, things like that. This is the number two. We use this on our kitchen table and also on our dining room floors. If you've watched back or watched those videos with us as we were doing them, those turned out real great. So one thing I like to do, the instructions, if you get this, say that you can let it pool up. I like to rub it all the way in. I feel like I have better results and it's more consistent. If you want it to look kind of weathered and old, maybe let it pull up. It'll get darker in the areas where it pulls up. You want to let this dry about 15-20 minutes. If it's, if it's warm, it'll dry out that quick and then you can seal it. If it's not as dark as you want it, once it's dry, you can go back in and put another coat on. Let me bring you in close. This is kind of what I'm talking about. It's just sitting on the top here. It's kind of pulled up. I just, I rub that in so that it's consistently even across the whole piece. I feel like it's light enough with, since it's water-based, you still get kind of some of the imperfections and inconsistencies that you would get just from the wood itself. So I'm just gonna take my white swan. I'm gonna be painting the base of both of these. Deb got a little bit of stain on here, so I'm just gonna come across and fix that up. They were already white, so I'm really just kind of touching it up. We did two coats of the DIY White Swan. It is now dry, so I'm using my Orbital Sander 220 sandpaper. If you watch me, it's kind of my go-to for distressing with the DIY and the Fairy Chalk Mother. I'm gonna distress it, get all the dust off, then we'll be ready to seal. We are getting ready to seal these. I'm using Sweet Pickens Top Coat. It's a great waterproof coat and it's nice and matte so it won't look super shiny and it will be durable because I love to eat in bed. So I have to have something that will hold up to all my snacks, my milk, my cookies, and this is great. I'm using my Wooster Foam Brush. I'll make sure that Zeb puts a link below. And I'm just gonna brush two coats over everywhere and three coats on top, waiting about two hours in between to allow for it to cure and then you probably should give it at least a couple days before you put anything on top of it. I probably won't wait because I'm a rebel, but sometimes, depending on humidity, it takes a while to cure. All right, so we couldn't find a rug that I liked. I do, I thought about just doing the same rug that I have in the living room, but that would be boring. And so I went to this rug. We went everywhere. Zeb was getting a little annoyed at me. I had to feed him waffles. If you follow me on Instagram, you see we round up at Waffle Up at some point. I wasn't annoyed. I just we like, have find a, a rug, lady. We have a hard time finding exactly what we want because we do so much uh, thing, so many things ourselves. So unless we wanted to spend like twelve hundred dollars on a rug, which oh, we I don't. found one I liked for twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, I know. Yes. We don't want to spend that much. So. so we got these two rugs. They were seventy nine ninety nine a piece at Walmart. So we're going to duct tape them together and create one big rug. And most of this seam is going to be hidden under the bed, so no big yeah. deal. And the bench. And the bench. So. All right, so we're just going to flip them over, duct tape them, and then we'll get the bed moved in here and... We probably should be using carpet tape, but we don't have that. This is as good as carpet tape. I don't know what carpet tape is. <laughs> oh, look, there's garbage under there. Here. Grab the other side. So part of the update on these nightstands is Jamie got these cup pulls here and I'm just going to install those real quick. These are the same style that we put all in the kitchen on all the drawers.
Hey, we got the wall painted white. <laughs> Just part of it. Over here is not done yet, but. Oh, I've... can they see the part that's not done? Uh-uh. <laughs> everything you can't see is a hot mess. <laughs> Even right here in front of my feet, there's like a ton of stuff. Yeah, uh, well, we haven't put anything back in the drawers yet, so it's all right here. Yeah. Um, and the rest of the room's not painted. So tomorrow, we're going to be painting the rest of the room. Hopefully, doing some new corbels for the doors. Yeah, I'm going to at least add to what we have up there. They're very plain on the doors, and for, so that the light fixtures have a little bit more going on than they had previously. And he's going to make some candlesticks, right? Yep, she wants some candlesticks, and then... And I'll finish painting. I don't know that we're going to get to framing out the TV tomorrow. We'll see. It might be like Friday, Saturday. Thing. Tomorrow, tomorrow's not Friday? Tomorrow's Thursday. Oh, I'm tired. All right. Um, and then, yeah, so probably by the end of the week, I would say we'll have this whole room finished. Yeah, the, I feel like right, the though. decor takes longer than anything. Well, it's just been, because it's such a small room and we don't have anywhere else to put all the stuff, it's, we've been just shuffling it from one side of the room to the other. A brief rundown of what we've been working on. Uh, we used bare marquee paint for the walls. Zeb showed you a close-up of the can earlier. And then on the nightstands, we used DIY White Swan. We distressed them, and then the top is uh, stained, which one? Real stain number two? Real stain number two on the top. And then sealed with Sweet Pickens Top Coat. All those products you can get at jamierayvintage.com. We'll be sure to put a link below for the foam brush. That's my favorite way to apply top coat. Be sure to hit the notifications button so you don't miss the second half or third half. It'll probably have three more parts. <laughs> <laughs> of our master bedroom renovation. Be sure to subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage. Hit that notifications button so that way you're not missing any of our DIYs. Give us a thumbs up and comment below with any questions, thoughts, concerns, or anything you have about this DIY or other projects we've been working on. <laughs>